The Whips have agreed that the next business will be item 18, a motion on improving health outcomes. Can I ask Councillor Thomas to move and Councillor Ambash to second the motion in their names? Formally moved. Formally second. Thank you. There is an amendment to this motion that has been circulated. Can I ask Councillor Mrs McDermott to move and Councillor Mrs Clay to second the amendment? I move the amendment. Thank you. Yes, yep. Councillor Thomas. Thank you, Mr Mayor, fellow councillors. I'd like to start uh, by uh, expanding on the element of the motion uh, that talks about the problems at St George's and the recent CQC inspection. And uh, the Health Overview and Scrutiny Committee did have a report uh, on this matter at our last uh, 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 committee meeting. Um, and I certainly feel that uh, the issues that were raised were so serious that uh, something that every uh, member in this uh, uh, chamber ought to uh, be uh, very concerned about. The CQC's final report isn't yet out, uh, but uh, the hospital were able to share the uh, preliminary uh, results uh, with us. And they told us about a number of really basic uh, failures uh, which have required immediate action and uh, immediate action has been taken to uh, put some of them right I'm pleased to say but they include uh, a risk of electric shock due to water leakage in one ward uh, and fire safety problems and overcrowding in Lanesborough Wing. The Trust has also discovered that its system for, for tracking, uh, for measuring referral to treatment times isn't fit for purpose. In fact it's so flawed that they've uh, ceased actually uh, measuring uh, the number of uh, patients who aren't uh, meeting their waiting time targets at the moment. Um, and as a result, they've had to admit uh, that patients are waiting for longer than they ought to be for treatment. And also, worryingly, uh, some may not have been appropriately clinically prioritised. Uh, on the things that they are still able to measure, such as uh, uh, meeting the uh, four-hour A&E waiting time, uh, unfortunately, they're not meeting that target. And the number of complaints has been going up uh, for many months. And I think it's, it's clear uh, that there has been a serious breakdown in leadership and governance at the Trust. And that the systems and infrastructure required to ensure its effective running are not in place. Uh, their corporate uh, risk reg register, I, uh, I recommend a look at it actually, uh, it is full uh, of red. Um, and uh, shockingly, uh, it concludes that their overall exposure to a core operational risk is, uh, I, and I quote, uh, extreme. So the hospital's now got an interim chair and chief executive. They do seem to be trying to uh, square up to the uh, uh, very serious challenges I've, I've described, uh, but they also face huge uh, financial deficit. And despite delivering uh, 13.5 million pounds in savings so far uh, to date this financial year, the trust is still forecasting an end of year deficit of 55 and a half uh, million pounds. And I think uh, one of the uh, dangers here is that uh, with a target uh, that they've set themselves of a further 36 and a half million pounds of savings to make this year, uh, an NHS improvement uh, on uh, the hospital's back, uh, uh, that, uh, that cuts could be made that are at the expense of patient care and safe uh, staffing levels. Um, and uh, I have to say I'm pleased that the uh, majority party seems to have uh, uh, accepted uh, 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 the proposition in our uh, motion that uh, uh, that is a, uh, a risk and must not be allowed to happen. At the same time that all of this is happening at St George's, uh, similar problems are being encountered, uh, encountered across the rest of the NHS. Uh, and last night, Councillor Clay and I uh, attended the meeting of uh, the so-called uh, Joint Overview and Scrutiny Committee for South West London, uh, on which we were briefed on an emerging uh, £900 million gap across the health and social care economy uh, uh, in the region, unless action uh, is not taken to uh, contain costs. And so this motion tries to address the question of what the Council's uh, response uh, should be to uh, all of this. Um, and I would say that there's undoubtedly much good work that already goes on between the Council and its partners in the NHS. And I think we would all agree that uh, this could be, uh, should be supported and that it can be built upon. And uh, I'm sure that we'll uh, hear contributions uh, from the members opposite about how wonderful that all is. Uh, I, I, I won't uh, 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 repeat that for you. 
Um, but uh, I also believe that the council could and should be doing more to show strong uh, leadership uh, in uh, this area. And that's what I want to talk about in my remaining time. So firstly, our, our residents uh, rightly care deeply about St George's. And I do think that we need to take urgent action to uh, scrutinize uh, in detail exactly uh, what is happening at the Trust, uh, the causes of the problems that they're facing, uh, and uh, the action uh, that they're proposing to take uh, to tackle uh, those issues, including uh, proposed cost-saving measures, uh, but also looking at uh, important issues like uh, staffing levels as well. Uh, and we did have a conversation at uh, uh, our last overview and scrutiny committee meeting. I'm somewhat disappointed that the uh, motion, uh, uh, sorry, the amendment, uh, uh, appears to uh, water down the proposition that uh, we need to look at this in more detail and very urgently, however. Um, secondly, I think we need to recognise that the council itself has an important role to play in reducing pressure on St George's by keeping people out of hospital uh, and ensuring that support is in place seven days a week to enable patients to go home as soon as possible. And there's considerably more that we could do. Um, uh, uh, we uh, are jointly with the CCG partners in uh, Wandsworth's Better Care Fund and unfortunately we've missed some of our targets there. Finally, I'd like to see us engage more actively in conversations uh, within South West London about uh, reshaping the way uh, that health and social care services are provided. Uh, and yes, including in areas such as uh, Roehampton, one of the de most deprived areas uh, in our borough. Uh, I think we do need to look at doing things uh, differently. Uh, we need to resist false economies, but this council should actually be taking a lead uh, in working with partners to look at how we can uh, invest more in uh, prevention and engaging uh, with local uh, communities to make sure that uh, uh, we do deliver uh, better outcomes for all of the residents uh, in our borough. And I look forward to hearing everyone's contributions in the debate. Thank you. Councillor Mrs McDermott. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The Labour motion is very far-reaching and appears to cover every part of St George's current woes. Of course we want a world-class health system, and of course we want St George's to sort itself out and provide a safe and caring and top-quality um, provision. As a governor at St George's, I'm well aware of the stresses and strains that the hospital is under, and as um, Councillor Thomas said, all trusts across the country are very much in the same boat. It may well be that we have to find more money for the health service, but before that, each trust, including St George's, must put its house in order and to do all it can to prevent any waste of public money. The management systems, the management of the IT systems, the estates, which I think also Councillor Thomas has alluded to, and the buildings have been appalling. Hospital trusts do not deserve money until they can categorically prove that every penny they receive from the public purse is spent efficiently on the people that matter, the patients. I can't tell you of the tedious board meetings I sat through that to endlessly discuss processes and, and procedures, quite, quite, quite soon forgetting that they've got to check that those words are actually having the right impact on the sick and the unwell. With a new chairman and a new um, chief executive officer at St George's, things are just about beginning to turn round. Um, we've just appointed three new non-executive directors who are already providing very robust challenge to the hospital. The chairman says he's confident the hospital is in, quote, the foothills of the recovery, unquote. We really do hope so. Information and data is now much more accurate and reliable, so directors can actually, and governors, can pinpoint where the issues lie. But, with more reliable data, horror stories are beginning to unfold. As the motion notes, and also Councillor Thomas mentioned, the Trust judges that its overall level of exposure to operational risk is extreme. In fact, 22 of the 24 areas are highlighted as red. Might I add that now is not the time for junior doctors to go on strike. Everyone involved in the hospital should be pulling together to get the job done and improve our health care. What help is a striking doctor to a child who's undergoing cancer treatment, to a mother about to give birth, to an elderly parent in the last days of their life, an elderly patient in the last days of their life? We are a nation growing older and living longer. 
It is not inaccurate to say that the elderly residents are a drag on na our nation's finances and we'll all be those elderly residents one day. So it's imperative that we all work together to prevent unnecessary hos hospital admissions. With elderly parents myself, and I'm sure many of us also have elderly parents here, I know of the real fear they have of spending their last days in a soulless place away from home. Stephen Dorrell, chairman of the NHS Federation and former Conservative Health Secretary, said only a day ago that Britain must stop fetishing the NHS budget and give more taxpayers' money to councils. He feels hospitals are used as an expensive way to look after the elderly. He went on to say that starving councils of money for social care for the elderly was insane economics and bad social policy. The Sustainability and Transformation Plan, or SDP as we call it for short, for South West London is looking at this very problem. The way healthcare services are delivered in our region to ensure they provide the best possible care for patients. St George's is clear it wants to remain a key provider for specialist services, including major trauma, which not many people would argue with. But I believe the Trust will have to prove more of a case to be a key provider for local patients. It's here that councils and the CCGs play an extremely important part in avoiding hospital admissions. Should extra money be available for health care, with the proviso I mentioned earlier, careful thought must go to where it is most needed. GPs accessible 24-7 and good quality social care at home is better than filling up expensive hospital beds. And we must move patients through the hospital system swiftly and efficiently and get them home to their own beds. I know that the council is working very effectively to reduce delayed transfer and care. And we're one of the best in, in London in performing that, that case. But I think also we can do more to prevent hospital admissions in the first place for the elderly. We need to have work, more work between GPs and other health professionals and, and, and importantly, older, the older residents themselves. So I propose the amendments as suggested, and I particularly refer to paragraph little i, to be much more precise to reflect this. At the moment, it's a rather blunt um, statement to keep people out of a hospital, which I think is probably not quite what they mean. Overall, I welcome the principle of the motion. I'm sure many of us are happy to sort some of the paragraphs, but amendments are needed to make it a useful and workable motion that benefits all our Wandsworth residents. I move the amendment. Councillor Dr. Ellen Khan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Firstly, I would like to pay tribute to one of my closest friends, Councillor Sally Ann, who recently lost her life at a very young age. She was taken from us at a time when she really shouldn't have been. And she benefited from fantastic care at St. George's Hospital. I would also like to pay tribute to, to Councillor Paul White, a very good friend of mine, who was in the in the chamber in the House of Commons when I made my maiden speech and it's been an honour to be here and to listen to his today. But I must say, I'm going to begin this by registering my disappointment because I have the utmost respect for my colleagues at the party opposite. I have enjoyed two years of sitting on the Health and Adult Care Committee with Councillor, uh, uh, Councillor Clay and other colleagues. But to hear tonight children with cancer being used as a political pawn is absolutely disgusting and should never ever happen we should not allow that to happen tonight i speak of issues i speak of issues i speak of issues may i finish why don't you ask your 10.1 thousand fake followers ian hart everybody I would like to refer you to the Twitter handle Re Real Ian Hart 14 if you want further exposure on that. I'd like to continue speaking. Tonight I speak of issues that are cross-party and affect all of us, our families and our residents. Councillor McDermott, while I respect that you have sat in endless board meetings, tonight all over Wandsworth, as we prepare to take to our beds, there are a whole cohort of residents who are leaving their homes, leaving their loved ones, to go and serve our communities on the NHS front line. Many have their own dependence and choose selflessly to serve others day and night. The current state of the NHS requires them to work 12 to 14 hour shifts, often without a break and for many days in a row, and they don't complain. Sadly, it is now becoming impossible for our valued NHS workers to do their jobs safely and fairly. 
I would like to ask the party opposite. How many of you have read the new junior doctor's contract that's been proposed? Case in point. If you had, you would know the very reason that doctors have gone on strike is because the new contract will force them to not be able to serve these kids with cancer and people's dying parents safely and without danger. What this new contract asks them to do is to remove all the safeguards that make it safe to practice medicine. That's why doctors went on strike. And NHS England showed that no patients were affected. If you have a point to make, please make a point of intervention, Councillor McDermott. Please do. Make, make, make a point of intervention, please do. I'm more than happy to debate this. You haven't even read the contract. Second of all, would you agree to a contract that penalises women? Point of intervention, women? really. Yes, I accept. I accept. Perhaps Councillor Rosine Alin Khan My could name's ask Rosena. her side. Rosena Alin could, Khan. Could ask her side if they read the contract. <coughs> Well, they have read the contract, and they're not the ones disputing the contract. And that wasn't my question. Okay, okay. Labour colleagues, have you read the contract? Put your hands up if you've read the contract. Thank you very much. Yeah. They have. The point is, they're not, they're not refuting the argument. They're not refuting my argument, and you are. Do you, so you clearly support a contract that penalises women who have left to have babies and return to the workforce. That's what you're saying in agreeing to the contract. That's what you're accepting. But I'm going to get back to the point. I'm going to get back to the point because clearly this is why our NHS is in a shambles. It's because you are allowing people in Wandsworth, a third of residents cannot get a GP appointment within a week and many not at all. Cuts to local government funding to social care, mental health and public health mean that the strain on the hospital is so great people can't cope. That's why targets are being missed. Please. Come and debate this with me. Stand up, make a point of intervention. I would love to talk to you. No. <laughs> okay, fine. Because you have nothing to say. You have no concrete argument. You prefer to troll. And I just might like to say, for the, they, say you've truly they say you've truly made it when you have your very own troll. <laughs> Councillor Ian Hart, you typify that for me. Thank you very much. You really make me feel as though I've made it. The lack of nurses and midwives already exists. Slashing nurse bursary. No, I'm sorry. I'm going can to I express the reason I'm upset. The reason I'm I'm upset. The reason I'm upset is because children with cancer are being used as political pawns in this debate. I, I, believe, I, believe, I believe that the party opposite is composed of good people who want the same as us, which is the best for our NHS and the best for ones with residents. Councillor Alan Khan, would you take an intervention? Yeah, I will. Sorry. 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 I, 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 I don't think I'm going to be able to speak later on, but I, I just wanted to say I, I find this whole the tone, tone of what's going on here deeply upsetting. Councillor Thomas and I spent three hours of our, of our lives, which we won't get back last night. I know. Which, trying, trying, trying to find out what was going to happen with this STP, which is a secret. We aren't allowed to know it. I don't have much longer left of my time. It was a very, very frustrating thing, but the one thing was that we worked really hard together. I know. And the and thing that combined us was that we pleasure. were doing it for the people of Wandsworth. Exactly, not, which is my point. Not to try to score political points. But that, but that's, that was my Sorry, point. I didn't know I was shouting. That's my point. No, no. I, I, I reiterate. I absolutely reiterate. I absolutely reiterate. I've never been frustrated in the chamber like this. I have the utmost respect for, for you, Councillor Clay. I enjoy working with you. We have a great working relationship, and I know that you care about ones with residents as much as I do, as much as Councillor Thomas does. That is not the argument. The argument is just saying if you're pleased going to put down the, the NHS workforce that work day and night for your parents, your children, at least have read the contract. That's all I'm saying. Look, bottom line, we need to invest in Councillor our energy. Councillor Alan Khan, would you take an intervention from uh, Councillor Hogg? Yes, no, with, with I'm pleasure. I'm afraid, Mr Mayor, I was requesting that you ask the Council to listen to a Councillor and a Member of Parliament with some respect. It's actually the worst I've ever seen it, that someone should have to face 25 other people shouting at them when they come here to speak. Thank you, Councillor Hall. And all I did was register my absolute detest at the fact that children with cancer were used in this political argument because it's quite frankly unacceptable. So cuts to mental health budgets, cuts to local government social care spending, all of these, all of these affect the issue. Okay, I respect that. So uh, this is an issue of passion. The NHS, I mean, this is what our country is founded on. 
people being able to get world-class care free at the point of delivery. So please forgive my overzealous passion on the issue tonight, because you can't expect someone who's given their life 11 years on the front line to fight the good fight for all residents, who stand shoulder to shoulder with all the doctors and nurses and porters and receptionists and allied health professionals who do the same, to be met with a level of disrespect where you basically blame half the issues on them. So I'm saying we would have really, really, we would have really, really accepted your amendments were it not for point E yeah. and um, we're dead against it. Thank you very much for listening. Councillor Mrs Dunn. Thank you Mr Mayor. Um, I must say I'm a little bit um, discombobulated um, by Dr Alan Khan's intervention for whom I have the greatest respect. Um, but um, I fail to see um, how my party or us in this chamber have used children with cancer as a political football. And, um, and therefore, um, if you don't mind, I'm going to move slightly back to what I feel is what this debate is supposed to be about, which is the concerns about the um, CQC report about St George's Tushing. Now, this is our, our local hospital. It's a huge employer. Um, we use the hospital ourselves, our family, our friends, our constituents do. And there are a number of issues which are incredibly alarming. And I would like to think that we can work um, in a much more cohesive and cross-party way about this. Um, and certainly, um, I mean, if I could rewind a little bit, I mean, there are very popular misconceptions about the NHS. I mean, you know, one of the popular misconceptions is that um, the Conservative Party is hell-bent on privatising the NHS. And I had a little, did a little bit of research around this to find out if it was true or not. And I can tell you the latest figures show that there has been a small increase in privatisation over the last five years of about 5%. But then if you look at the increase in the NHS budget, which is around 3% for the same period, this is not a massive privatisation programme. This is a way of looking at a health service and working out how we can best serve our population. And as local councillors, it's our duty to try and represent our constituents and our residents as best we can. And Wandsworth is a very diverse borough, and we have great differences in wealth and also health equality. And that's one of the things that we do need to focus on. And the second thing I just wanted to bring up as a popular misconception is that the NHS is run by bureaucrats and managers and that they are ruining our health service. Well, actually, this is completely untrue. The latest statistic is that about 4% of the NHS workforce are made up of managers. Now, if you look across industry standards in other industries, the average in terms of management is about 10% in other industries. So 4% is actually a little bit on the light side. Um, and then just moving to another popular misconception, and that is that um, immigration is crippling the NHS. Well, I completely and thoroughly refute that, and it is certainly not true in Wandsworth, and it's certainly not true at St George's Tooting. In actual fact, 11% of our NHS workforce is made up of immigrants, and these are people who we need to help us run the NHS. Now, moving back to, away from popular misconceptions, moving back to St George's and our concerns about the CQC report. There are three things that I want to highlight. I know that um, budgetary issues have already been mentioned by Councillor Thomas, and the fact that the budget deficit in Georgia's has increased massively is of huge concern. And as local councillors, we need to be pushing and scrutinising as often and as much as we can. But there are other, perhaps less. Um, issues that might slip slightly beneath the radar and one is things to do with compliance compliance with the duty of candor compliance with fit and proper persons and those are things that actually rather make me go cold because I slightly wonder what this means for our residents where where will they be affected where there are issues to do with compliance 
with candour. And I think we can all guess. And that's a red flag that I want to send up for all of you when you're getting casework and talking to your residents. It's incredibly important. And then the last one was the empowerment within theatres and that requirement for staff to challenge colleagues over dress code. And that might seem incredibly minor, but again, when I saw that, that made me really worry. So those are three things that I wanted to flag up, which perhaps other people weren't discussing. And then the last thing I wanted to mention was, if you look at what our vision for the future, for the NHS, is going to be, and what we could do as representatives, I think that IT is going to be key. Because at the moment, it's part of the problem. But I also believe that it could be part of the solution. And if you go and you look at other industries and how they've used IT technology to solve problems by using statistics to pinpoint where the health inequalities are and to actually address them. So if I could throw that back to colleagues and where they can bring influence to bear, I'd much appreciate it. Thank you. Councillor Stokes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, council members. In recognition of World Mental Health Day, which took place earlier this week, I plan to speak in support of the motion by focusing on the issue of mental health. Many of you will be familiar with the statistic that one in four of us will suffer from mental health condition at any point in our lives. In this chamber, it means 15 of us. Within Wandsworth, this equates to nearly 80,000 residents. If we have not personally experienced mental illness at some stage in our lives, then we almost certainly know friends or family that have. The issue has a clear youth dimension. Around half of those with mental health conditions will have experienced their first symptoms before the age of 14. In Wandsworth, the latest report on health and well-being of children and young people found that, pro that the proportion of year 7 to 10 pupils reporting excellent or good mental health, emotional health is in decline. The estimated prevalence of children aged 5 to 16 years in the borough with mental health conditions is more than 3,400. The imperative to act on mental health is ultimately one focused on, on ensuring everyone can fulfill their potential and live a healthy life. However, it is also clear that failure to address mental ill health has broader social and economic consequences. In England alone, these are estimated to co cost up to £105 billion a year. In her first speech as Prime Minister in July this year, Theresa May was spot on when she said, if you suffer from mental health problems, there isn't enough help to hand. Only a quarter of people with mental health conditions receive treatment, with the majority of those that do only accessing services when they reach crisis point. Much of the problem relates to historical underfunding. Although mental health accounts for 28% of the burden of disease, it gets just 13% of the NHS budget. And at the local authority level, the average spend on direct mental health initiatives amounts to just 1% of public health budgets. Yet in spite of legislative commitments to parity of esteem between mental and physical health, and in spite of political gestures calling for an end to sweeping mental health issues under the carpet, it is clear that the rhetoric remains a far cry from reality. The Public Accounts Committee certainly took this view when they published the findings from their inquiry into mental health services last month. Their report concludes that the full cost of implementing the changes set out by government are not yet fully understood, leaving the financial burden with clinical commissioning groups. However, they themselves are having to divert funding away from mental health services to prop up acute care, and more than half have already cut their mental health budgets this year. But mental health is not just about crisis interventions from health providers like St George's Hospital. It is about addressing the underlying risk factors as well as maximising ways to promotion, promote emotional well-being. It is as much about early years outreach, libraries and recreational activities as it is about hospital wards and GP services. It is about providing safe and affordable housing, tackling food poverty, supporting new parents, children in care and ensuring decent work opportunities. Proactive and preventative measures stop a problem becoming a crisis. They also reduce pressures on an already overstretched and financially struggling health service, which has already been touched on in earlier speeches. So what can Come On to Council be doing? How should it be marking World Mental Health Day this week? Well, firstly, Wandsworth Council could sign up to the Mental Health Challenge, 
an initiative designed specifically for local authorities and set up by the Centre for Mental Health, the Mental Health Foundation and Young Minds, among others. The challenge commits local authorities to take clear leadership in addressing mental ill health across all aspects of their business. Involving both officers and members, it would provide the opportunity for the council to learn from what others are doing, as well as share some of the innovative work it is itself engaged in, such as the active wellbeing pilot developed with Wandsworth Mind and the local CCG. The voluntary and community sector can play a significant role in providing early, targeted and cost-effective interventions to those at particular risk of poor mental health. They can provide a critical bridge between clinical and community care. However, they need a supportive infrastructure so that they can collaborate, innovate and work effectively with statutory services. The Council can play a much bigger role in supporting the development of this infrastructure. Finally, as an employer, Wandsworth Council could join other local authorities, government departments, leading retailers and FTSE 100 companies by signing up to the Time to Change Employer Pledge. It could also encourage leading employers across the borough to do the same. At a time when the Council is undergoing significant organisational change and a time when staff absenteeism rates are of concern, this would seem to make clear business sense. The Prime Minister is clear that not enough is being done, so I hope she will hold true to her words and ensure that mental health services receive the investment they desperately need. But we too can step up to the mental health challenge, and I hope we as members of the Council can commit to do so this evening. Thank you. Councillor Carpenter. <coughs> Councillor Carpenter. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, I'm going to deal with the governance and finance aspects of the NHS. So those of you who are not already asleep can go to sleep now. <laughs> I've long argued that the NHS has two fundamental problems, a management problem and a governance problem. The management problem is that there are not enough good managers to go around. And the governance problem is the boards of NHS trusts are too full of superannuated worthies like ourselves and not full enough of the professional people required to oversee what are very large businesses. These problems have been exacerbated by the misguided reforms brought in by the Tory-led government of 2010, which atomised rather than consolidated the provision of NHS services, so exacerbating the management and governance problems rather than mitigating them. We are now seeing the consequences of these misguided policies, together with the government's equally misguided austerity programme, flared out across the NHS rather and locally in St George's Trust. Currently, St George's is forecasting a 55.6 million deficit for the current financial year, a figure that is likely to balloon by the end of the financial year. At the same time, it is being asked to find substantial additional efficiency savings. Its financial problems are exacerbated by the way in which the NHS does its accounting. St George's runs Queen Mary's Hospital in Roehampton. This was built under a 27-year private finance initiative, build and operate contract. We are now some 10 years into that contract. During this period, St George's is paying down capital costs of the building, so it looks expensive. Once the initial 27-year period is over, the capital costs will have been paid off, and so Queen Mary's will look cheap. As a consequence, St George's is currently incentivised to move services out of expensive Queen Mary's into other cheaper locations. However, the fact of the matter is that NHS England will pick up the tab for Queen Mary's PFI contract whether St George's uses it or not. When you consolidate the costs up to the whole NHS level, it's a wash. These PFI costs are sunk costs. Shuffling them around the NHS balance sheet between trusts and NHS England makes no difference to them. What would make a difference is the refinancing of PFI schemes. The borrowing costs of PFI are high, reflecting the initial construction risk of the projects. Once Queen Mary's Hospital was completed, that construction risk crystallised 
giving the opportunity to refinance the scheme at lower interest rates. That opportunity is still available. With interest rates currently below 1% for government borrowing, and the current government having an appetite for infrastructure investments, there is an ideal opportunity to buy out the preliminary PFI contract and other similar contracts and refinance them with government debt, so making real financial savings to the NHS. This could either be done at the NHS England level or the individual trust level. Such a procedure would be similar to the buyout of council housing, which Wandsworth participated in a few years ago. Instead of paying large and increasing annual payments to central government for the assumed costs of social housing, we paid a upper capital sum of some 400 million to buy out the government debt, financing it by borrowing from the Public Works Loan Fund and using our own reserves. As a result, we now have greater control of our social housing finances and have saved millions. St George's could similarly buy out the Queen Mary PFI contract. If it did so, it would both improve its overall financial position and remove itself from the perverse financial incentive it currently has to empty the modern Queen Mary Hospital building and move services to its crumbling St George's campus. Mr Mayor, I've concentrated on financial detail, but we should not lose sight of the fact that the NHS is there to serve its patients. Queen Mary's is a modern hospital located in Roehampton, one of the most deprived wards in Wandsworth, with one of the highest health needs. We should be putting our NHS resources where people need them. Arcane accounting conventions are incentivizing St George's to move services away from where they are needed. I've indicated how we can align St George's financial incentives with clinical need. I trust that those of you who have influence with St George's Trust will encourage them to do so. Thank you. Councillor Mrs Clay. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Scrutinising the NHS in Wandsworth is a tortuous process. Perhaps not quite as tortuous as debating it in this chamber, but nevertheless. This time, a year ago, my committee was being assured that St George's was a great hospital, admittedly with financial problems, but nothing worse than any other hospital, and that there was a coherent plan to deal with it. Separately, a joint subcommittee of five boroughs was being assured that we had far too many beds in local mental health hospitals and we could close loads of them without creating any problems. Yet another joint committee, there's a lot of joint committees in the world of the NHS in Wandsworth, I can tell you. Yet another joint committee was being told about South West London's collaborative commissioning group's eight-year plan for a series of harmonised clinical pathways. That's their jargon, I don't know what it means either. <laughs> Aimed at improving services to patients and sorting out a projected £600 million local deficit. Fast forward 12 months. We're now just waiting to see how bad the CQC's report on St George's will be. And most of the board have been replaced. The Mental Health Trust is opening new wards to cope with unprecedented demand. And the eight-year plan has been ditched it's been replaced by a five-year sustainability and transformation plan. The details of this are a secret. But last night, a joint committee of six boroughs, there's another one of those, were told that if nothing is done, there'll be a financial gap of £900 million in five years. <laughs> Challenging the NHS is like wrestling with an octopus. There's always at least one tentacle you haven't got hold of, which it whips out and tries to strangle you with. Last night, as I've already said, Councillor Thomas and I fought hard to get answers about this new five-year plan. We backed each other up, we stood up for Wandsworth res residents and shared our frustrations. At the end, one of the members of the public came over and congratulated us both on our insistent questioning. In much the same way, Councillor Alan Khan and I worked together a year ago on the same committee. It isn't all sweetness and light. The year before that, I had Councillor Ambash. <laughs> on, on a separate subcommittee, councillors from different political parties and boroughs came together unanimously to challenge the Mental Health Trust and the CCGs, ultimately with great success. Anybody who uses the NHS knows that it's far from perfect, 
that it's sometimes difficult to get a GP appointment. You'll probably wait too long in A&E. Your operation might have been cancelled whether or not the junior doctors were on strike. We also know that parts are absolutely wonderful and our access to free care when we need it makes us the envy of the world. It's obvious we can't preserve the NHS in ASPIC. It has to adapt to changing demands and it must manage its finite, finite budget effectively. We know that change worries patients, staff and politicians. So scrutinising any proposals is going to be fought but critical. I agree wholeheartedly with the spirit of Councillor Thomas's motion that the health outcomes of Wandsworth residents is of paramount importance. Our amendment makes minor tweaks. I hope that we can unanimously support it. Our residents will not thank us if we put scoring political points above the needs of patients. Thank you. Mr Mayor, um, in view of the lateness of the hour, uh, I move that the remainder of tonight's business be dealt with under Standing Order 32. Second. Adjournment I to the second Council. It. Adjournment to the Council. Just hang on, hang on, thank you. The motion's been moved, is it seconded? Second it. Second it. So the motion before Council. <laughs> So the motion before the council is the guillotine has been moved. Those in favour? Those against? Carried 38 eens. So we now move through the rest so of the So we now move through the rest of the amendment. Thank you. The amendment. The, net, the matter now before the council is the amendment moved by Councillor Mrs. McDermott, seconded by Councillor Mrs. Clay on improving health outcomes, agenda, <coughs> 18, uh, uh, agenda item 18. Please indicate by show of hands those for the amendment. Those in favour of the just say it again, those in favour of the amendment. Those in favour of the amendment. Those against. Those against the amendment. <laughs> 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 17, so let the amendments carry 31 17. The amendments carried 31 17. So now the substantive motion as amended, is that the same numbers? Is the, uh, the substantive uh, no, the motion, motion as, as, amended. as amended is, is, that, uh, is that the same numbers? No, we'd like to vote for the board of health So uh, uh, those in favour of. Those in favour of A to D. Those in favour of A to D, please raise hands. A to D and F to G. A to D, a to D and F to G. So those in, those in favour of A to D. As A to D and F to G. I think that's agreed. Is that agreed? Yeah. 